So you can start. Can we start now? Yes, sir, you can start. <clears throat> A very good morning to all of you. And uh, this is the third uh, talk uh, in the MOES, uh, Ministry of Earth Sciences uh, webinar uh, series. I am Satish Shanoi, Director, uh, Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services in uh, Hyderabad. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the tsunamis, just the basics of tsunamis, and also on uh, how to generate the warnings on uh, tsunamis. If you all remember, we experienced the devastating tsunami in 2004, precisely on 26th December, which killed more than uh, two and a half lakh uh, people in the Indian Ocean region. In India also, we lost more than uh, 10,000 uh, lives. And that uh, gave us the rude shock that uh, the tsunamis can uh, create uh, devastations, unimaginable devastation in our country as well. Till that time, we didn't had the capability to issue the tsunami warnings. Soon after that, uh, government of India decided to establish the tsunami early warning center and Ministry of Earth Sciences was uh, given the charge to establish a center. And Ministry of Earth Sciences uh, established, asked uh, INCOIS or International Center for Ocean Information Services to establish the Tsunami Early Warning Center for uh, India. Of course, uh, the performance of uh, the center was uh, great. It was as per the international standards, even uh, much above the international standards existed at that time. Hence, the UNESCO, the UN agency called uh, UNESCO, which is coordinating the tsunami early warning services uh, in the oceans all over the globe, designated this uh, tsunami early warning center uh, as the responsible center to provide a tsunami early warning services for all the countries on the Indian Ocean Rim. So we have developed that expertise. So I just would like to share some of our experience uh, uh, with you. Basically, I just want to tell you about the basics of uh, tsunamis. What are tsunamis and what causes them? How we can uh, generate the early warnings? So with this introduction, uh, let me go to my uh, present uh, talk. And um, I will try to be very non-technical so that um, all of you can um, uh, uh, follow this talk. So the title of my talk is uh, Tsunami Basics and uh, uh, Warning System. We are very familiar with uh, tropical cyclones because uh, in our country we get uh, tropical cyclones almost every year. And the major ones, uh, the recent ones are uh, Philin that hit uh, Odisha coast and Hudhud that hit uh, Vishakapatram in Andhra Pradesh. And in 1990 there was a great cyclone um, which hit Odisha coast and uh, nearly 10,000 people lost their lives. So we get uh, cyclones frequently um, 
almost every year either during monsoon or uh, and most devastating cyclones are uh, post monsoon uh, during uh, now october november uh, period and now today we know how to detect the cyclones when they form over the oceans and uh, issue the warnings and along with the cyclone there are storm surges or so cyclone piles up a lot of water on the coast and that is causing uh, most of the destruction inundation of the villages flooding of the villages flood uh, devastation of the houses and killing the people uh, who are staying there similar effect is caused by tsunami as well tsunami also comes and hits the coast and uh, floods the villages and uh, takes away the um, houses boats people whatever is on its way it takes out in the uh, sea but there are there is a major difference between these two today we can uh, detect the cyclone much much before at least a few days in advance and uh, issue the warnings exact location where the cyclone is going to have the landfall and we can also find out uh, for that particular cyclone what would be the height of the storm surge how much flooding it is going to cause and uh, we can uh, uh, issue the early warnings and inform the governments that uh, these are the areas you are going to have uh, a storm surge so please uh, evacuate all these people from this uh, coast and we can give the government uh, more than 24 hours uh, time to act upon but the difference with the tsunami is that uh, we still do not have any technology or the science has not developed uh, to detect the tsunamis in advance before their occurrence so tsunamis we can uh, detect or we can warn only after its occurrence so after its occurrence we are mostly left out with uh, very few minutes to few hours for example if i take a 2004 uh, tsunami which was caused by a large earthquake uh, of uh, northern sumatra sumatra is an island in uh, indonesia it is uh, the south of our andaman uh, nicobar group of islands and it is thousands of uh, kilometers away from uh, uh, the mainland india our east coast uh, tamil nadu and uh, andhra pradesh or odisha coast but few hundred kilometers away from our andaman nicobar islands so that earthquake generated the tsunami and the tsunami reached our Andaman Nicobar Islands within 20 minutes because they are very close close to that region. So tsunami wave would reach fast there first. And for our mainland areas, for example, Nagapatnam experienced the devastation, including some pockets in Kerala, people got uh, uh, people are killed so for those regions we had a two to three hours time for kerala coast four hours so if we had a warning system at that time we could have saved all those people from getting killed in the tsunami so the time available with us is very very short not more than few hours and for nearby areas only few minutes so we should be very careful about the tsunamis and the tsunamis do not occur very frequently of course we know that after 2004 no tsunami has occurred in our region and uh, during our lifetime we never we don't even uh, remember any other uh, tsunami so tsunamis can occur uh, anytime it may not occur very frequently but it, uh, if it occurs, it is a devastating, uh, uh, it is very devastating. So the, uh, keeping these uh, aspects in uh, mind, 
let us look at what is what are tsunamis so tsunamis are nothing but uh, the large uh, a system of uh, ocean waves that are formed as a result of large scale displacement of uh, sea water column and they can travel long distances without losing the energy so the tsunamis will occur if there is a large disturbance of the ocean water column normally the entire water column is uh, disturbed if you have a large earthquake on the ocean bottom then the entire water column gets disturbed and uh, it will generate a wave that is called tsunami this word tsunami came from japanese language su mean japanese language su means harbor and nami means wave because earlier when uh, tsunamis uh, tsunamis are much more frequent uh, in japan than in other uh, countries there are reasons for that i will come to that uh, little later so these tsunamis when they occur in japan much before uh, uh, maybe few hundred years uh, ago they used to see that whenever there is a tsunami the whole harbor gets uh, disturbed and the ships uh, jump up and down and they hit uh, each other because of their violent uh, motion because the harbor uh, a large wave is generated in the harbor so that is why they called uh, it as harbor wave or tsunami and we today we call uh, this kind of waves uh, as uh, a tsunami if you are out in the sea in the deep ocean if a tsunami passes uh, you are on a boat or a ship in the deep ocean you will never even realize that uh, a tsunami wave has passed you because in the deep ocean the wave uh, the height of the tsunami wave is less than a meter it is nothing more than a few cent few tens of centimeter maybe 30 cm 40 cm and you will never even realize if ships are out at uh, sea during a tsunami they are very safe and if a boat is uh, a fishing boat uh, is there in the deep deep sea they will never even realize that a tsunami wave has passed them and the tsunami waves have a long uh, um, a long uh, wavelengths hundreds of kilometers and their periods are a few minutes to about an hour so uh, the first wave can come second wave can come within few minutes as well as in uh, an hour so even if you see first wave don't think that uh, there won't be any other wave maybe after an hour the next wave can come and another property of the tsunami waves is that uh, their speed or the the speed at which these waves travel that is more or less proportional to the square root of the water depth so in the deeper water where the uh, ocean depths are uh, 7000 or 4000 uh, meters they can travel at um, 900 or 700 more than 700 uh, km per hour so for a indian ocean if you consider uh, in the deep uh, 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 deep regions on an average the water depth is about 4000 meters or the tsunami which was generated uh, in uh, sumatra uh, the water depths are about 4000 meters and in that region the tsunami wave travels at 713 kilometers uh, per hour that means it is like a jet plane or the plane what we travel at that speed the wave is uh, traveling that is why the tsunami waves reach the shore the coast within a few hours it is like a jet plane take off from uh, indonesia and uh, arrive at uh, chennai within couple of hours so that is the speed at which the tsunami wave travels but as it comes closer and closer to the shore when it comes on the shelf 
where the depths are lesser and lesser or uh, 100 uh, 200 uh, meters it slows down because uh, the uh, friction of the ocean bottom the ocean floor it slows down so it has to overcome that uh, friction and travel so it slows down so it it becomes a hand, um, 48 kilometer per hour or 159 kilometer per hour or uh, for example at a 10 meter water depth it is about uh, 36 kilometer per hour that's like our car so a tsunami wave which was traveling at uh, jet speed like a aeroplane when it comes closer to the shore it becomes uh, like uh, traveling in a car like of course if a car hits you also you are not going to be spared just like that but uh, when the speed is uh, decreasing its wavelength also gets compressed the wavelengths which are nearly 300 kilometers in the deeper ocean it gets compressed because of the friction offered by the ocean bottom the friction increases as the depth decreases and this entire energy is getting compressed and compressed and compressed within shorter uh, wavelength so the energy involved with the tsunami wave is much 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 larger because almost same energy except the energy which is lost due to the friction is preserved and though it is at a car speed its energy the momentum at which it is going to hit the coast is much much higher that is why when the tsunami wave hits everything what is there gets uh, destroyed and gets uh, 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 washed off so its uh, height increases its uh, wavelength decreases but energy flux gets uh, preserved so it is uh, hitting at a very high uh, energy at a very high uh, uh, wave height so what are the causes of tsunami so to cause a tsunami the ocean water column has to be disturbed this one can disturb by an earthquake if an earthquake occurs on the ocean floor the entire water column will get uh, disturbed it will uh, um, uh, disturb the water column up and down it will generate the waves or if there is an underwater volcanic eruption or an underwater landslide if there is a large a huge landslide in the ocean it is like you throw a uh, stone in the pond or uh, you uh, just uh, uh, create a mudslide in the pond any disturbance of the water column will generate the waves because that energy is released and it will generate the waves and the waves will start propagating also if somebody can uh, detonate a powerful uh, nuclear device like the recently those uh, whatsapp messages which are uh, doing around the north korea is uh, planning to destroy us by generating a tsunami theoretically it is possible i don't say no if you can uh, explode a, um, a, a a very powerful nuclear device in the ocean that energy will generate the waves and those waves will travel exactly like a tsunami wave with the same properties of tsunami wave and can destroy the uh, destroy the uh, the um, the coast uh, uh, where which they arrive and the fourth cause is uh, if a large meteor it hits the ocean bottom it is like you throw a large stone in the pond it will generate the waves so these are the four major causes which can generate major uh, tsunamis but 99 percent of the tsunamis which have been recorded and which have been experienced and the history has the uh, memory almost 98 to 99 percent of the tsunamis have been generated by the earthquakes so uh, the most of the tsunamis uh, get generated because of the earthquakes which are happening on the ocean floor so if a major earthquake happens on the ocean floor uh, you we can expect that it will generate a tsunami but the question is whether every earthquake will generate a tsunami that is where the warning centers 
uh, role comes uh, in picture. So if I uh, just to uh, give you an idea of kind of the losses during uh, due to the 10 uh, most powerful uh, tsunamis or 10 most uh, important uh, worst uh, tsunamis in the history. Um, uh, of course, the number one rank is for the Sumatra, Indonesia tsunami on 26th uh, December 2004. Its magnitude was uh, 9.3, the earthquake magnitude. It was uh, such a very, very powerful uh, earthquake the most powerful uh, in the recorded uh, history and uh, the loss uh, the economic loss which has been uh, estimated is um, about uh, 10 billion us dollars and that killed the uh, 230000 uh, people and several uh, uh, thousands uh, still missing or unaccounted for so that was the most devastating tsunami in our recorded uh, history then during our lifetime itself in 2011 uh, precisely on 11th march 2011 tohoku tsunami uh, on the coast of uh, japan occurred with a magnitude of uh, 9 and the loss uh, economic loss is much higher because it mainly hit the one of the most developed country japan so when you are most developed your loss also is uh, higher if you are poor, I have nothing much to lose except my hut. But if I am very wealthy, I have a mansion to lose. So uh, the economic loss is uh, much higher. 235 billion uh, US dollars were lost. And it killed about 18,000 uh, uh, people because uh, Japan is much more uh, prepared than any other uh, country. And uh, that tsunami mostly uh, uh, affected the Japan. The third in the rank is the Lisbon tsunami on 1st November 1755, 8.5 magnitude that killed about 60,000 people. And the fourth one is not a tsunami which is created by the earthquake. That tsunami occurred because the Krakatoa uh, volcano uh, in uh, Indonesia that erupted uh, and the large quantity of uh, lava was uh, pushed into the sea. When this uh, Krakatoa explosion occurred, a portion of that, uh, uh, that volcano, it just broke and slipped in the sea. Even recently also it happened and uh, uh, though it is not, was not a very major tsunami, it created a tsunami in the Java Sea just uh, last year in 2019, uh, 18 or 19 it was. So this was a major explosion and uh, it, uh, um, it pushed uh, a portion of the Krakatoa volcano into the sea and that generated a major tsunami which killed uh, about 40,000 people. Then uh, Tsunada Sea, Japan, that is the fifth uh, largest uh, tsunami in 1498. Magnitude was 8.3, killed uh, 31,000 people, and so on. You can uh, see the most devastating uh, 10 tsunamis. And if you see this list out of 10, six occurred in Japan. So Japan is the most uh, vulnerable country for uh, tsunamis. There is a reason for that, because the Japan is sitting on the area where, which is most prone for the earthquakes. So, and um, it happens. And uh, I have also listed uh, the major uh, tsunamis that occurred in the, uh, our Indonesia, uh, Indian Ocean. Of course, Sumatra tsunami on 26th December is the most uh, powerful one which occurred. Before that, uh, um, in uh, uh, yeah, there was one after that uh, when Ben Kulu uh, tsunami 8.4 magnitude on 12th September 2007. Of course, uh, it was not a uh, very um, uh, devastating uh, tsunami. Then there was another one in 2006, 
in Java earthquake 7.8, 17th July. And before our uh, Sumatra tsunami, only we remember about the Makran uh, tsunami. Makran coast is uh, the coast which is uh, uh, near to Pakistan, Iran, that area. That is called the Makran, uh, uh, Makran area or Makran coast. And uh, there was a tsunami, an earthquake of 8.5 magnitude and a tsunami. Even today also, scientists are of two opinion what generated that tsunami. Whether the earthquake generated that 8.5 magnitude earthquake generated or the, it is not the earthquake but the land slide or the mud slide that followed the earthquake generated the tsunami. Still there is a big debate is going on and this question is not yet uh, settled. Whatever it is, there was an earthquake of 8.5 magnitude and uh, there are evidences to uh, also show that there was a large uh, uh, mudslide in that region and that generated uh, that tsunami. And we have the records of uh, that tsunami uh, all along our uh, Indian coast also. And some of the records says that uh, that tsunami reached uh, up to Karwar uh, in uh, Karnataka and it reached uh, Mumbai and uh, Karwar, uh, but we do we do not have uh, much information on uh, uh, on the losses uh, what what was caused by that tsunami. But there are uh, reports on um, devastating um, uh, losses uh, in Karachi as well as um, Ormara and uh, those regions in uh, Pakistan and also in some of those uh, Gulf countries. But these are very sketchy um, um, records are uh, available. Otherwise, we don't know much about uh, uh, that 1945 tsunami. Another tsunami which has been uh, uh, recorded by paleo tsunami uh, scientists as well as uh, in the records is this uh, Kar Nicobar uh, earthquake which occurred uh, on 31st December 1881 with a magnitude of uh, 7.9. And that tsunami, um, the evidences are available that that tsunami arrived even on the um, Andhra Pradesh and uh, Tamil Nadu uh, coast. We have very good evidences on um, the arrival of tsunami waves uh, from this Karnikobar uh, uh, tsunami um, on the mainland uh, uh, Indian coast also. So what causes this earthquake? Because 99% uh, of the tsunamis are occurring because of the earthquakes. We should uh, look at uh, the reasons for the earthquakes. If you take a slice, like uh, you cut the watermelon, so you just cut a slice of uh, earth. Let us say that uh, earth is uh, more than uh, 6,000 uh, kilometer radius. And I take a knife and uh, cut a slice of the uh, earth and take out that piece then i will see that uh, there are uh, four distinct uh, layers there is a solid inner core uh, uh, at um, uh, for few uh, um, uh, from uh, 6378 that's earth's radius to about uh, 5000 kilometers uh, deep that means about 1000 kilometer uh, thick solid the uh, inner core of the earth then there is a liquid outer core it's completely in a molten uh, state from 500 uh, 5000 to about 3000 kilometers so about uh, 2000 kilometer thick uh, liquid core and then there is a semi um, uh, solid type of uh, mantle what is called uh, which is again uh, to about 3,000 to close to 100 kilometers. And uh, above that is the solid part, which we are seeing as the land, ocean floor, mountains, etc. And that uh, uh, layer, which is not more than uh, 80 to 100 kilometers thick, that is the skin of the earth where we live. 
and the issue is that the skin of the uh, earth that is not a complete solid uh, um, or a complete uh, sheet which is enveloping the earth though the earth is a sphere the outer uh, uh, skin of this uh, sphere like a football you have a rubber bladder inside which is uh, intact but the outside of the football is uh, made of uh, several pieces which are stitched together similarly the earth's outer skin is uh, several uh, pieces you can see in the bottom uh, picture there are those uh, lines drawn there are two types of lines drawn one uh, line uh, uh, with uh, 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 um, staggered lines and the other one is uh, with uh, um, uh, with uh, inverted uh, cones on them so there are two types of uh, uh, boundaries for uh, uh, these uh, pieces and each piece is called uh, the plate or simply i can say that uh, the outer uh, skin of the earth is made of uh, several pieces called the plates there are uh, seven major plates of course within these plates there are uh, again the cracks so it is a cracked uh, plate uh, uh, that is what we have and why this is cracking because uh, still the earth is uh, um, uh, consolidating uh, the, it is becoming uh, cooler and uh, cooler from its uh, uh, formation about for more than uh, 4 and 4.5 uh, billion years ago so this uh, uh, from the inside from the um, uh, from the outer core and mantle uh, the uh, molten uh, stuff comes up and it comes up and up and it comes out uh, uh, through these uh, cracks so that is happening because uh, uh, if you see the ocean floor it is not flat it has mountain chains <clears throat> see if we say that uh, the greatest mountains are himalayas that is what we study in our uh, schools the highest mountains are himalayas agreed and their length is what only few thousand kilometers but if you look at the mountain chains on the ocean floor they are tens of thousand kilometers you see in the atlantic from the north somewhere near uh, greenland that mountain chain extends 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 almost close to the uh, antarctic so tens of thousand kilometers long mountain chains even in indian, indian ocean you can see that that mountain chain starts somewhere near uh, the horn of uh, africa and extends one branch uh, after after some time it branches one branch goes uh, towards west and the other branch goes towards the east again 10000s of kilometers these mountain regions are called the oceanic mid oceanic ridges even in pacific you can see on the eastern side of the pacific these mountain chains are growing how these mountain chains are forming is because uh, this molten stuff as you see in that uh, animation that comes out and uh, these mountain chains uh, where there are these ridges are there the uh, floor is getting expanded or as the more and more uh, matter comes out from the from inside the earth these uh, ridges are pushing this uh, plate so that that from there it gets pushed because it cannot uh, contain everything there it gets pushed and on the other side as i have shown the other animation on the right side the when it pushed what happens one plate goes and pushes the other plate and uh, one of the plate starts going uh, below the other one so these areas are called the subduction zones and these subduction zones are the uh, uh, plate boundaries where the uh, where one plate is getting pressed against the other and constantly it is getting uh, uh, pressed if you look at uh, the subduction zone in the uh, in the indian ocean right from myanmar uh, 
region all along our andaman nicobar islands extending to the indonesian region sumatra java and all those indonesian islands this uh, plate boundary or the uh, indo uh, uh, our uh, uh, andaman nicobar uh, uh, indonesian uh, uh, subduction zone that extends uh, thousands of uh, kilometers that means the indo australian plate which is being pushed by the <coughs> mid indian ocean ridge is moving towards uh, pushing the plate uh, on the eastern side the eurasian or uh, sunda plate and it is pushing and pushing at different uh, velocities you can see that uh, uh, in the burma or the northern andaman region about 59 mm per uh, year and uh, in the south uh, in the indonesian region its speed is about 68 mm per year and uh, so with these different uh, speeds this uh, it's are being pushed uh, against uh, each other so when you keep on pushing this uh, plate some uh, and it is subducting that means the indo australian plate is getting uh, going below the uh, eurasian or uh, sunda plate keep on going down and down then of course it gets melted and uh, goes into the uh, mantle and uh, 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 outer core of the earth gets melted there so this is a convective process which is keep on happening and as this plate moves uh, Uh, one below the other or uh, against the other some part of the plate gets uh, stuck it doesn't move much so the that part of the plate get uh, stuck and uh, the rest of the plate is again uh, keep on uh, moving it is like uh, uh, we are all uh, uh, running and uh, some part of the people could not run because of the uh, this then uh, 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 there is a stampede like so that kind of a Uh, uh, uh situation arises and that plate which gets stuck it can not hold for long time it uh, breaks when it breaks it releases the energy so that causes the uh, earthquake and that breaking can happen at 100 kilometers below or uh, uh, 10 kilometers below the ocean floor anywhere that uh, breaking can happen and when you when it breaks as i have shown this uh, three figures you can see that the breaking need not be same every time it can break in different ways see one is called uh, normal fault that means when it breaks one plate just uh, slips down it if it uh, slips down it is what we call uh, in technical terms a normal fault or just it slip it is uh, gently slipped like and the second type is called strike slip so when it uh, pushes and it breaks it need can just uh, rub against each other because the energy has to be released so it has it broke and when it breaks it can just uh, slips slip against one another that means it uh, uh, it just uh, slips uh, parallelly not uh, there is no vertical movement and the third type is uh, when it breaks the broken plate just bounces throwing the entire water column uh, uh, up so that uh, disturbs the water column the maximum so the most uh, dangerous uh, from the point of view of a tsunami most dangerous type of earthquake is thrust fault or a reverse uh, fault earthquake where when the earthquake occurs it throws up the water so if that is what is happening like uh, in 2004 that was a thrust fault uh, earthquake and that uh, um, that will uh, disturb this water column from the tsunami point of view that is the most dangerous uh, type of the earthquake of course normal fault also can generate a tsunami but it will disturb the water column to a lesser extent and uh, that tsunami need not be uh, need not be i don't say it will not be it need not be a devastating uh, tsunami so the issue is if we have to warn 
first we have to detect where the earthquake has uh, occurred and uh, uh, what type of earthquake that has occurred to be precise if we detect only the earthquake and uh, detect uh, estimate its magnitude then some of the job is done we know where the earthquake has occurred whether the earthquake has occurred on the ocean floor then we have to be careful about a tsunami and if it is of higher magnitude we have to be careful that it will can generate a tsunami but even every higher magnitude earthquake need not create a tsunami for example if the earthquake has occurred because of the strike slip fault then it need not create a tsunami and that is what happened in 2012 we had a, a large earthquake 8.5 magnitude i will come to that little uh, later and no tsunami was generated very very minor tsunami was a small minor tsunami was generated and uh, uh, but the earthquake magnitude was uh, large though not like uh, uh, 2004 uh, earthquake this earthquake magnitude also was 8.5 which is good enough to generate a large tsunami but luckily that earthquake occurred because of a, a strike slip fault and didn't generate a devastating uh, uh, tsunami at that time so when the earthquake occurs the energy is released and uh, the because of the energy is released it uh, generates uh, waves these are not tsunami waves these are shock waves on the earth so uh, on the solid earth uh, is broken at uh, some place and that breaking generates uh, shock waves and uh, shear waves so these shock waves are called uh, primary waves and these waves can travel very very fast within few seconds they can travel all around the globe and they will travel all around the globe uh, within a few seconds and less than a minute and uh, uh, the secondary waves or shear waves both these are uh, body waves or they are uh, they are occurring on the body of the earth and they will uh, travel at much faster speed so even before the tsunami if tsunami is uh, traveling at a jet speed these are these waves are traveling at a much higher uh, 10 times the uh, higher speed of a rocket not even a jet so these waves will arrive uh, at distant locations much much faster before the tsunami so that is good for us so that means we can detect the earthquake where it has occurred much before the tsunami waves uh, come to our uh, our uh, region so what we can uh, so the, uh, this uh, 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 most importantly there are uh, four types of waves one is called a primary wave it's a pressure wave so it is a back and forth motion and uh, secondary wave shear wave uh, that, uh, that is uh, another type of wave and uh, then there are surface waves called Rayleigh waves and uh, Love waves they also will uh, travel and when these waves pass through the uh, earth it will shake whatever uh, the, uh, the those locations and whatever on the earth that's why when an earthquake occurs our houses the buildings everything gets uh, sh uh, 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 shaken and even uh, they can collapse if they cannot withstand that uh, kind of a shaking when these waves uh, pass through that is what uh, uh, it happens so if we keep uh, some instrument uh, called uh, if i have a very uh, heavy pendulum which is hand at a location very heavy one and a drum uh, on which i can put a chart and this uh, drum is uh, rotating at a clock speed and this uh, along with this uh, drum this chart also is uh, moving and if i attach a pen to this uh, pendulum uh, it will uh, whenever these waves comes this base of this instrument uh, it will uh, uh, it will also move back and forth and this pen which is just hanging at a uh, from the pendulum which is at a, uh, which is uh, sturdy will draw those waves you can see the kind of waves this is a simple instrument which is called uh, a seismograph or a seismometer 
uh, because earlier days uh, it used only a pendulum and a, a chart and it uh, draw this uh, graph uh, on that uh, chart so it is called a seismograph and these days uh, of course uh, we have the modern uh, electronic uh, instruments to detect these waves and record them so these days we call them seismo uh, meters or whatever it is these waves uh, primary and secondary waves they are uh, uh, shock waves they travel uh, all around the globe and if you have a seismometer we can record uh, these waves so uh, uh, but there are properties for these waves the p waves which travel much much faster than the s waves of course both are traveling at a much higher speed uh, uh, than uh, uh, any other wave that's why the both of them arrive uh, all over the tra can travel all over the globe within uh, less than a minute or maximum of two minutes but the p waves are comparatively faster than the s waves so if an earthquake occurs somewhere let's say in the sumatra region i and if i have a seismograph in hyderabad first i will record the p waves because they arrive fast then comes the s waves and if i can distinguish this p and s wave and the time difference in their arrival i can and uh, estimate what is the distance at which this earthquake has occurred so i can find out from hyderabad at what distance this earthquake has occurred so i know i have the p waves arrived on my um, seismograph you can see how the p wave looks like and how the s wave looks like and the experienced geophysicist they can identify these waves p wave and s wave from the uh, this uh, seismographs and mark uh, and you can take the time difference between the p and the s wave arrival the first arrival of the p wave and the first arrival of the s wave and from this time difference you can and you know the velocity of these waves so you can find out from which distance or what is the distance from which they are coming but the issue is that when i calculate this distance it can be north of hyderabad south of hyderabad west of hyderabad or east of hyderabad so i don't know whether it has come from the sumatra or it has come from makran coast or it has come from uh, only thing i know is that they came from uh, about 4000 kilometers or 3000 kilometers away from hyderabad that's all i know now so how to find out that then i then only i can uh, uh, fix the location if i say that this uh, an earthquake has occurred about 3000 kilometers away from hyderabad of no use because it can be uh, the earthquake can be in himalayas earthquake can be in uh, uh, pakistan earthquake can be in indonesia earthquake can be somewhere else we don't know so what i do is uh, i take that uh, data and for the hyderabad uh, um, uh, with a center as hyderabad draw a circle so the earthquake as far as uh, i am concerned we sitting in hyderabad it, the location can fall anywhere on that uh, circle so i will draw a circle then my colleague is sitting in uh, delhi he also has recorded and he will also do the same he will draw a circle then i have a colleague for example who is sitting in colombo he also is recording and doing the same thing so individually three of us we know only that uh, the earthquake has occurred on the circles which we have drawn with the center as colombo center as hyderabad or center as uh, delhi and uh, unless we three of us uh, talk together and exchange our circles we cannot find out exactly what is the location so if we three of uh, three of us join <coughs> we put this three circles on the same map then these three circles because of uh, the difference in distance to that uh, earthquake location from each of us 
the distance from hyderabad is different from distance from uh, delhi to sumatra or uh, from colombo to sumatra so when you put these uh, three circles those three circles will inter intersect at one location maybe at two locations but most likely they will intersect at one location only so that the intersection is the actual epicenter of the earth so i know now to find out from uh, what distance the earthquake has occurred and also i know where the earthquake has occurred so this is the job i have to do first to find out where the earthquake has occurred and from these uh, records of the p and s waves and uh, depending on the magnitude of the earthquake those wiggles which i had shown you earlier they will be um, uh, they will be larger or uh, smaller and based on that there are techniques to calculate the magnitude of the earthquakes so they based on that i can calculate the magnitude of the earthquake also and if i am uh, more expertise i can also find out what type of earthquake has caused uh, depending on the properties of uh, these uh, waves i don't want to go in uh, details right now but based on these properties of these waves and using uh, certain mathematical uh, functions and algorithms i can immediately find out what type of earthquake has occurred in that region whether it is a um, normal fault whether it is a strike slip or whether it is a reverse fault earthquake that has occurred in that region so the normally this uh, magnitude of the earthquake is uh, represented in uh, uh, richter scale charles francis richter working in um, uh, southern california he was working in scripps institution of uh, uh, oceanography where one of the famous uh, institution world over located in san diego he was a geophysicist working there he uh, defined uh, a method to define uh, the earthquake magnitude but he defined that based on uh, certain conditions in south california earthquakes which are occurring and also based on the kind of uh, um, instrument which he uh, developed and that is what he used and he uh, used uh, some logarithmic uh, functions to um, quantify the energy release so when we say 8.5 or 9 it represents uh, a number which is proportional to the energy released by the earthquake of course in 1970s uh, that uh, richter scale was uh, modified using a more generalized uh, definition called uh, moment magnitude scale and these days we all use this moment magnitude scale though everybody reports as uh, richter scale actually we are we are reporting is not at the uh, richter scale uh, even in a tsunami or earthquake reports you will see that uh, the magnitude of uh, so and so occurred uh, of richter scale actually not it is a moment magnitude which is used and uh, reported because it is on the logarithmic scale one magnitude of increase for example 8 to 9 increase if a uh, magnitude was 8 and the magnitude is 8 a 9 then the energy released is a tenfold so from 8 to 9 if earthquake uh, magnitude is 9 means it has released 10 times the energy than the earthquake which occurred at uh, a uh, magnitude of 8 uh, and the corresponding uh, 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 sorry the tenfold uh, increase in the amplitude of the earthquake and uh, 31.6 times the uh, increase in the uh, energy release so uh, if you compare two earthquakes of 8 and 9 the energy release is more than 31.6 times or for each point to increase uh, in the uh, magnitude for example 8.2 or 8.4 the energy release is doubled 
so if you want to assess the actual impact you should have the clear or the very precise uh, magnitude and your errors in this estimation of the magnitude should not be more than uh, 0.2 because if 0.2 you make an error that means you are going to double the uh, energy release and make mistakes in uh, uh, estimating what kind of devastations uh, that particular uh, earthquake can create so these days uh, i need not call uh, my friend in delhi or uh, colombo because uh, everything is in digital so there are uh, hundreds of uh, uh, actually thousands not even hundred thousands of uh, seismometers are uh, installed by almost every country to record these earthquakes <clears throat> and a few hundreds of them for example the tsunami early warning center in hyderabad at our institute we receive data from uh, about 400 or 425 of them you can see that map uh, with little triangles which shows uh, the location of uh, seismometers from which we are uh, uh, receiving the data it is not that we cannot receive from others but uh, every country do not share uh, uh, all the data for example in india we have uh, hundreds um, i think uh, nearly 130 uh, seismic uh, uh, seismometers but we share uh, with the others uh, from only four stations so of course that data all the data is available to us because we are government uh, agency um, in india similarly in us they may have thousands of them but they share only few hundred and um, other countries also very uh, share a few but that is good enough to detect uh, the large uh, earthquakes so if you have more of them and more uh, data is coming from uh, more uh, seismic uh, seismometers your accuracy is in determining the location as well as uh, the depth of the earthquake and uh, the other properties of the earthquake like magnitude and how long uh, the rupture has occurred all these uh, increases so if you have fewer stations your accuracies are low and uh, if you have more you can have uh, more uh, uh, more uh, accuracies so this is the kind of uh, data that comes to the uh, early warning center uh, keep on uh, transmitting this data and we can receive this data um, even if there is no earthquake also there are uh, these waves uh, p and s waves keep on uh, arriving um, of, but of lesser uh, magnitude and they will keep on coming to our uh, uh, computers like this uh, uh, within a few seconds you can see that red line and the uh, each of the wave uh, which uh, it is just a, a few minutes within few minutes this data uh, keeps uh, arriving and uh, the computers are constantly analyzing this data to find out whether an earthquake uh, has occurred at that particular time and uh, it will calculate uh, its magnitude and uh, want the early warning center automatically we have automated the entire process of uh, receiving data from uh, 425 uh, seismometers all over the world and uh, plus uh, more than 100 seismometers from uh, indian region and uh, keep on uh, observing this uh, analyzing this uh, computer does for us uh, uh, so computer uh, keeps on analyzing this um, uh, these records and try and determines the uh, location and magnitude of the earthquake for example the earthquake which occurred uh, on 11th april 2012 uh, west of uh, sumatra island in indonesia its magnitude was 8.5 and you can see those uh, that uh, uh, red circle that's the location of the earthquake the west of uh, sumatra and uh, you can also see those lines from which the data was uh, used so those lines represent the seismic stations which reported data and the computer uh, uh, judiciously used the data to determine that uh, the magnitude of so hundreds of uh, seismometer uh, data was used uh, to determine the magnitude of uh, uh, that uh, uh, particular earthquake so once we determine that uh, magnitude of the earthquake then to issue a tsunami warning it uh, the next step is uh, 
uh, find out for that particular earthquake how much water column got displaced so for that we use a mathematical numerical uh, model what is called tsunami model and using that model for example if the sea floor has uh, displaced by 1 meter so how much that shock or that energy could displace the water level at uh, or the uh, sea what the water column so that we can do with uh, some uh, mathematical formulations uh, most popularly known as okada solution and convert that uh, as a, the displacement and once that displacement is uh, determined then uh, we can uh, use the uh, numerical model to propagate that wave from that location to different uh, directions so that is what uh, so you can see that the wave has been generated and uh, one uh, crest of the wave is uh, going towards the uh, west and the trough had gone towards the uh, east uh, to thailand and uh, those regions and uh, if you read the report in uh, 2004 uh, tsunami you know that uh, thailand uh, first the sea got uh, completely exposed and people all uh, who are on the beach they run run into the sea because of the curiosity and they all got washed off the mainly the tourists in uh, bangkok and thailand that uh, uh, those coasts so you can uh, generate this using a numerical model and that is what uh, we do as the second step once we determine where the earthquake has occurred and what are its uh, magnitude and using this model then i can calculate what is the arrival time along my coast at the different locations each location i can uh, determine what is the Uh, expected arrival of the tsunami wave and uh, what is the expected height of the tsunami wave so i have divided the entire coast in a uh, uh, few uh, tens of kilometers 50 to uh, 70 kilometers to cover each district so now i know in uh, each district nagapatnam district what is the arrival of tsunami wave and uh, what is the height of that tsunami wave similarly for uh, krishna district i know what is the arrival of a tsunami wave and uh, um, or i can uh, uh, guess what would be the height of the tsunami wave which will be arriving at that location so this gives one advantage so if i take the magnitude of the earthquake and say that uh, even for a 2004 uh, uh, tsunami uh, its magnitude was 9.3 highest uh, magnitude and if i say that uh, the entire coast is going to get affected by tsunami that need not be true and we have seen that most of the devastation was in uh, nagapatnam some parts of uh, chennai and uh, kerala coast and of course andaman nicobar islands but not uh, puri and uh, those uh, coast or gujarat coast and those so we have to find out which are the locations on the coast which are going to get the very high tsunami waves and that is possible because of this mathematical numerical model and uh, i am happy that uh, we are the ones to introduce this concept in the tsunami early warning uh, chain that use of the numerical model once we know the earthquake uh, parameters and run that model and see the um, expected uh, way, uh, time of arrival of the tsunami wave and the uh, expected height of the tsunami wave at a different location and make use of that uh, uh, to issue the warnings so what we do is uh, if the tsunami wave height uh, is more than 2 uh, meters at uh, certain uh, stretches of the coast and that uh, Uh, arrival time is less than 60 meter that is less than an hour we don't have much time so we uh, issue a warning for that particular uh, stretch of the coast and if uh, even if it shows uh, more than 2 meters and i can wait some more time uh, the arrival time is more than 1 uh, hour that means i have some more time uh, on my hand i will not ask uh, Uh, i will not issue a warning for that stretch i will issue only a alert so i will uh, issue based on that uh, warning alert watch uh, like this uh, three categories of uh, warnings 
uh, to the disaster managers. So wherever uh, the uh, we issue the body, that means the disaster managers should immediately evacuate the um, population on the coast. People who are living on the coast should uh, go to the higher grounds. They should evacuate there. And uh, if uh, the um, regions where the alert is uh, issued, they can they do not evacuate, but everybody be prepared and uh, be ready for the next uh, step. And those who are uh, put under watch, they be aware of there could be a tsunami, but uh, there is no need of any panic. There is nothing, uh, no action has to be taken. And by this time, after a few minutes, the tsunami wave, if it has generated, it has traveled and it can get recorded at uh, different instruments which are kept at uh, sea. I will come to that. And based on that, uh, if I see that there is a significant the tsunami has been generated because if I measure the sea level using a sea level gauge or a tsunami buoy in the middle, middle of the ocean, then I am certain that uh, my numerical model is more dependable. Then uh, if still the numerical model is showing greater than two meter uh, wave height for that particular location, I will convert that as warning and uh, um, issue the warnings to the disaster management authorities that uh, you please evacuate the people from uh, these regions uh, as well. So that is the so first, uh, so that uh, using this numerical uh, model, I can issue a threat map which shows uh, the warning. Uh, this is a threat map which was issued uh, for the 2012 earthquake at 8.5 magnitude. It was a large earthquake. And the warning was issued only for the three islands in the uh, Andaman Nicobar group of islands. And even rest of the Andaman Islands, uh, only alert was issued. And for the entire uh, east coast of India, from West Bengal to um, Tamil Nadu and uh, part of uh, Kerala coast, only the alert was uh, issued because um, the numerical model showed uh, the wave heights less than uh, two meters. And the rest of the west coast, uh, only the uh, tsunami watch was issued. So by issuing this kind of uh, graded uh, warnings, the advantage is that the government missionary need not get uh, stressed, people need not get uh, panicked, and everybody need not run for their life where a tsunami wave is not going to arrive. And we turned out to be the right, no tsunami wave arrived um, on our coast uh, uh, due to that uh, tsunami because that tsunami that uh, earthquake was uh, a strike slip earthquake and very minor tsunami was generated even for andaman islands it was not a devastating uh, uh, tsunami this so this technique allows us to give more of location specific warnings than a general uh, uh, ocean uh, basin wide uh, uh, warning so to detect the tsunami waves, there are uh, different uh, instruments are kept. Some of them, uh, you see that those dots, those green dots uh, and um, uh, those circles, they are in the middle of the ocean. And these are all strategically placed uh, to detect the tsunami wave. For example, these uh, seven uh, um, dots, uh, circles you see, they are uh, the tsunami buoys which are deployed and maintained by India, by uh, INCOIS, as well as National Institute of Ocean Technology in uh, Chennai. We jointly, we both belong to the same ministry, so we jointly do this job, and we deploy these seven uh, tsunami buoys, uh, five in the Bay of Bengal region and uh, two in the Northern Arabian Sea region. We maintain that, and they have been placed in such a way that if an earthquake occurs in less than uh, half an hour, we should be able to detect the tsunami wave which is uh, which is propagating towards uh, our coast so that we can uh, issue the proper uh, warnings and in uh, for example this is an example of a tsunami buoy it is nothing but a bottom pressure recorder which is sitting on the 
sea floor at a depth of about uh, 4000 meters or 4 kilometers and uh, it just sends the pressure change in the water column so if a tsunami wave uh, occurs and passes so through that water column this uh, pressure uh, will change and it can detect uh, even up to the millimeter uh, level change in the sea level and it will transmit that data to the to a uh, surface buoy which is anchored uh, nearby uh, through acoustic uh, telemetry because radio waves cannot be used in the water so using sound waves uh, that data is uh, information is transmitted to the uh, surface buoy which is uh, floating on the sea surface and uh, that buoy in turn transmits uh, using radio waves to satellites and those satellites uh, transmit that data to the early warning uh, uh, centers so within a few seconds uh, the data from uh, the bpr is uh, transmitted to the early warning center so when the tsunami wave passes over this uh, bpr or uh, bottom pressure uh, recorder we know that a tsunami has been generated and uh, we have to um, uh, we have to upgrade or degrade our uh, warning uh, uh, process in addition to that there are uh, several sea level gauges which have been uh, uh, installed and maintained by again by individual uh, countries in india also we uh, again inquis is uh, maintaining uh, 36 uh, sea level gauges all along our uh, coast uh, mainland coast as well as in our islands of lakshadweep and uh, uh, and uh, and the Nicobar Island. Similarly, there are uh, sea level gauges which are uh, maintained by um, maintained by um, Indonesia, Australia, US, uh, several countries. So, if an earthquake occurs near Indonesia, within minutes the tsunami we will uh, reach one of those gauges in the uh, Indonesia, and uh, we uh, under uh, the or um, coordination of uh, UNESCO, we all share this data with each other for, um, for the warning purposes. So India also we share uh, from eight of them out of this 36 with other countries. Similarly, we also receive data from uh, Indonesia, Thailand, Myanmar, uh, Bangladesh, uh, um, and uh, several other countries. So all this dot shows uh, the sea level gauges so what we receive from uh, different countries. So these gauges also helps us in, um, they are also again uh, very simple uh, uh, floats which are uh, uh, deployed in some sort of a well. And as the sea level goes up and down, that float will move up and down and uh, report to how much the sea level has changed. Or uh, even today, the modern type of uh, radar gauges so using the microwaves, uh, just ping the water level and measure the changes in the water level so this tsunami buoys as well as the sea level gauges helps us in de detecting the tsunami waves if they have been uh, generated because uh, every earthquake did not produce a tsunami i'm just repeating that again and uh, when we use the mathematical model also math the numerical model uh, also it is not 100 percent accurate because uh, every model has its own uh, um uh, inaccuracies and we do not be 100 percent accurate but these observations they are the ultimate test and when we receive these kind of observations we can confirm and uh, be calibrate our model and uh, tell the uh, disaster management uh, authorities yes there is going to be a tsunami and we have also now the technology to extend these models further on the land because these models are uh, now we use very finite element uh, uh, models which we can even extend on the land and determine uh, what would be the flooding in that uh, region. Uh, in fact, we developed this model to predict the storm surge because the storm surge runs, uh, runs up the water on the shore and same model we converted uh, adopted for uh, tsunami also now and um, it can run on a parallel uh, computer so it um, it can run within a few minutes and uh, uh, we have adopted this also now not only that um, we can tell uh, 
the disaster managers um, uh, what would be the tsunami wave height we can also tell which are the regions which are going to get inundated and the, to what level i can even uh, tell uh, for uh, some of the regions where we have done uh, gis mapping whether uh, your house will get inundated or not even that information is available for nine locations machli patanam tutigurin uh, puri and uh, like that uh, there are nine locations we have done uh, detailed gis mapping and we know what kind of buildings are there um, in those regions and we can even give that kind of information so we have come up uh, a long way from uh, 2004 and we are able to provide this information but uh, we have to prepare the community to receive this information and act accordingly because uh, information just giving the early warning will not be sufficient. Our uh, disaster management officials, they are uh, Kaluka level or district level, they keep on changing. So what we do is uh, we call them every year to our institute and conduct a workshop for them, explain them what does it mean, uh, the warning, what does it mean, the watch, what does it mean, the alert, and how they should uh, react, what they should do, et cetera, et cetera and uh, we also keep on testing uh, because tomorrow somebody should not tell that uh, oh i didn't get the message so i don't know so every six months we call uh, every uh, uh, we do the test and ask them did you receive my message a test message so that we know that uh, uh, the connectivity between the early warning center in hyderabad and uh, in andaman nicobar uh, disaster management that uh, commissioner is intact Whenever I call, he can get that uh, uh, information. Or whenever we send the information, we are assured that he will get. So every six months, not only with uh, the disaster managers in uh, India, we also do the testing with uh, the 25 other countries on the Indian Ocean Rim because we have to provide uh, tsunami early warnings to those countries uh, as well. And also we had to we had to conduct the mock drills because uh, the um, uh, coastal population or the local janata should know how to react or what they should do when the tsunami warnings are uh, issued and the, uh, they sh the DMOs, uh, sh the disaster management uh, officers should explain. So for that, uh, several uh, mock exercises, at least uh, once in two years, uh, we conduct uh, the mock exercise uh, all over the Indian Ocean region, just to make the people uh, aware and uh, uh, to uh, be prepared for this tsunami. Uh, some of the villages, they are ready uh, for the tsunami or they know exactly. I am very happy that uh, two of our villages, uh, one is Boxipalli in uh, Ganjam and uh, another village uh, in uh, uh, Jagat Singhpur district of Odisha. They are perfect. They are. Uh, they know what is a tsunami and uh, what they should do, and they even know how to um, recognize if there is a, uh, a tsunami is going to come. Like uh, if a uh, earthquake is occurring very near to you and uh, you are violently shaken, then uh, don't stay near the coast. You be away. You go away from that uh, coast, and if you see that uh, the sea has withdrawn don't rush to that uh, sea uh, you will uh, you, uh, you are uh, that is part of the tsunami wave trough has come on, um, first and uh, the tsunami uh, wave crust is going to come so if you see that uh, sea has withdrawn don't go to the shore you run away from there go to the higher land because the tsunami is going to come that's a clear sign of a tsunami and also there are reports that uh, even uh, during the 2004 uh, tsunami, there are reports that in Andaman Nicobar uh, uh, forest, the elephants, they ran um, to the higher grounds or the mountains um, from the coast. So maybe they can uh, listen to these uh, <coughs> infra uh, waves, uh, which uh, human beings cannot listen. Our ears are not sensitive but they can recognize and uh, um, run away from the coast. So if they are running, 
um, in um, uh, uh, large herds of animals are running you also please run don't uh, think uh, much follow the animals in such a uh, such a situation also if you hear loud roar of water uh, which is coming that means the tsunami wave is coming don't wait there to watch that that will be your last watch if you wait there so run away from there and uh, time to time we should uh, um, assess uh, uh, these uh, risks involved and make the people uh, aware of that so that uh, we can uh, be safe from the tsunamis so the conclusion of uh, my talk is that um, there are uh, uh, we know what causes the tsunami mostly the earthquakes uh, sudden lift of uh, or drop of uh, sea floor and the disturbance of the water column that causes the tsunami and there are four major steps are involved in predicting the tsunami due to underwater earthquake they are uh, immediate detection of the earthquake within a few minutes you should detect the earthquake because the time available is very very short couple of hours only so normally uh, less than 10 minutes time i should be able to detect the earthquake estimate its uh, uh, magnitude and estimate the deformation on the sea floor and um, uh, then uh, find out uh, what is the predict the arrival time and uh, the height of the tsunami wave at different locations on the coast and then observe the tsunami waves using the tsunami buoys or tsunami meters and the sea level gauges and uh, uh, fine tune the early warnings and immediately disseminate this information through a formidable uh, communication uh, channel so these are all uh, we have to do but i have a caution so though we are uh, able to do um, detect the tsunamis and uh, issue the warnings if they are causing because of the earthquakes but we still don't know if uh, the tsunami is generated by a landslide uh, without a earthquake or a following a earthquake which maybe it strikes slip but uh, it caused a uh, landslide and that landslide causes a tsunami we have difficulty in uh, giving the early warnings on that for example very recently in uh, 2018 28th uh, september uh, in palu in uh, indonesia there was a earthquake of 7.4 magnitude and um, based on the characteristic of that earthquake no tsunami should have been generated and that earthquake actually occurred on the land on the island but uh, what happened was that that earthquake split the island in two and uh, one portion of the island uh, was uh, slipped it was a strike slip earthquake actually a harm, uh, harmless uh, earthquake uh, from the tsunami point of view but uh, that strike slip uh, pushed one portion of that uh, uh, island into the water so when it was pushed uh, as a landslide uh, it uh, it got pushed uh, and uh, it generated a tsunami and no warning center could issue any warning for that tsunami and unfortunately about 1400 people got killed uh, in uh, indonesia nearby because that tsunami was a very very local uh, tsunami not a um, um, not a ocean wide tsunami but in that uh, region you can see that uh, there are so many islands and it's a closed region in that region uh, uh, 1400 people got uh, killed so this is a challenge still uh, we have to face and we have to work out so to know um, to if you have to uh, create a early warning uh, system including this kind of uh, uh, happenings we should know whether that uh, region is susceptible for landslides then we can uh, do something about that and right now we don't have information of entire area where the landslide can occur or which cannot uh, occur so with this i conclude my talk and uh, thank you very much for uh, um, your patience in uh, listening the uh, uh, listening this talk uh, thank you dr shenai that was very very fundamental and informative talk for all of us
so we have uh, kept some questions for you in your chat window so you may recite the questions and answer as much as sure yeah so the first question is uh, is there any scope of using uh, uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning based algorithms by constant feeding of data to mark a domain of uh, occurrence uh, spreading of tsunami much before yeah uh, but uh, uh, see as i told you uh, the earthquakes are detected by the machines now and uh, it is based on certain algorithms we detect the earthquake uh, the location as well as its uh, magnitude so uh, that kind of a technique has been adopted to detect the um, earthquake where it has occurred what are its magnitude what are its characteristics but the tsunami uh, if we have to adopt this we need a lot of data from uh, different uh, observing system your tsunami is a water wave and um, if we can uh, use that of course we can uh, further improve uh, uh, which we have not done but definitely i think we should uh, look in uh, this aspect and i thank you for uh, raising uh, uh, this uh, this uh, point because we can uh, use the sea level data from all the tide gauges sea level gauges uh, spread all around as well as uh, from uh, uh, the tsunami buoys and uh, detect that of course uh, right now we are using this data to invert that waveform which is recorded by the sea level gauges of tsunami buoys and uh, re-estimate the uh, um, earthquake magnitude and correct for that thank you so the second question is uh, why do tsunamis not necessarily make their final approach to land as a series of giant breaking waves instead more likely a very rapidly rising uh, tide yeah as i uh, explained uh, you see that um, uh, they are of um, long wavelength and um, uh, the um, uh, the um, energy carried by these waves are uh, much much higher they were first traveling at like a jet and uh, as they come closer and closer the wavelengths are uh, compressed because of the um, resistance offered by the uh, ocean floor and they are slowed down so a jet plane is uh, being made a car so the entire energy is getting uh, compressed within that uh, wave and uh, that is getting uh, released so uh, it, it depends on how you slow down these uh, waves uh, uh with the present uh, kind of a uh, topography they cannot become uh, just uh, giant uh, breaking waves they are uh, still uh, um, becoming very giant wave and uh, breaking uh, um, on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, shore it is a, it is a property of uh, the uh, tsunami wave and the way the um, our uh, ocean floor uh, is laid down so uh, uh, balance between them is determining how much the wave height will uh, grow and um, when they can uh, break because of the uh, these are gravitational waves so as the wave height grows the earth's gravity only forces them to break and they break the third question is uh, very high magnitude underwater earthquakes generally produce tsunamis what is the minimum magnitude of earthquake to produce a tsunami yeah, uh, yeah normally uh, very high magnitudes uh, so as a thumb rule but don't take that as a um, um, as the uh, sacrosanct number as a thumb rule we say that uh, above 7 if the magnitude is above 7 they can generate a tsunami so even at our uh, warning center uh, we issue the uh, warning messages if the earthquake uh, in the Indian Ocean is uh, um, not tsunami warning, the earthquake uh, warning we issue only if it is more than 6.5. So if it is less than 6.5, we don't send out this information because otherwise every day uh, sometime tens of earthquake occurs and your, your mobile will keep on uh, ringing and they are not going to produce uh, uh, any tsunami. So as a thumb rule, we can say above uh, 7 
can be expected to generate a, a tsunami. But that's not a success in the number. Yeah, as I showed that example, even uh, 8.5 magnitude uh, earthquake, which uh, should have produced a tsunami, but didn't produce a tsunami because luckily it was a strike slip earthquake. So every high magnitude tsunami uh, earthquake also need not produce a uh, tsunami. They, uh, it has to satisfy several, uh, uh, all these conditions to produce a, a devastating tsunami. So question number four is, uh, is this seismic stations capable of detecting earthquakes if they happen in other places than plate uh, boundaries? Yes, certainly, because uh, they can, um, uh, as I told you, whenever an earthquake occurs uh, anywhere in the world, uh, whether it is in the plate boundary or in the other uh, fractures, uh, fracture zones, uh, or any other location or in the intra plate uh, uh, earthquakes are occurring. Anywhere they occur, they will transmit to those uh, P and S waves, primary waves, secondary waves, etc. And they can travel uh, all over the globe. So the seismometers are uh, capable of detecting uh, earthquakes um, wherever they occur. It need not be necessarily at the boundary itself. And question number five is, uh, how much time does the entire process take? from detection of earthquake analysis and then issuing of warning. Very good, very good question. In fact, uh, I should have a uh, highlight on uh, this aspect, but um, I'm sorry I missed that. And I'm glad that uh, somebody asked this question. Uh, from the earthquake occurrence, uh, the targeted time, which has been agreed by universally, by UNESCO, uh, by all the countries is that in less than 10 minutes, one should be able to detect the earthquake and issue the first bulletin. So first bulletin, which is issued from this uh, early warning center, will tell where the earthquake has occurred, what is its uh, magnitude, and a, just a guess based on the historic uh, uh, events uh, or the earthquakes occurred in uh, such location of such magnitude, a guess on whether a tsunami can occur or not. That's the first bulletin. And this has to be done within 10 minutes. And our Indian uh, uh, early warning center average uh, is, uh, it is uh, between uh, six to eight minutes. Of course, uh, on occasions we have taken uh, uh, 10 minutes. Um, otherwise, um, on most of the occasions, we have maintained uh, six to eight minutes. For example, that uh, large earthquake in 2012, Within uh, six minutes, we could issue the first uh, bulletin. Once that is done, that numerical model based the guess, actually it is a guess again, but only thing it is an informed uh, guess which has been taken with certain uh, um, uh, basic uh, assumptions and uh, uh, the mathematics and physics, which should happen within uh, 20 minutes of the time of the earthquake. So first we issue the first bulletin, which is uh, on the earthquake. And then the second, uh, uh, that threat map is issued within uh, um, less than 20 minutes. That's the target time is 20 minutes. One should not exceed uh, uh, 20 minutes uh, time so that uh, the disaster managers get uh, enough time. Enough means uh, more time uh, to act upon. So our uh, average is something like uh, 14 minutes or even uh, less than that uh, uh, sort of a time. So for 2012 uh, tsunami, we could uh, um, issue that within 12 minutes, uh, uh, 12 minutes time because it was in the Indonesian and we had uh, more capability to do that uh, uh, for that. Then uh, uh, the uh, then uh, the water level uh, observations will start uh, arriving, and from the uh, after 30 minutes onwards, uh, we can. Uh, improve the um, warnings, uh, warning bulletins, the third bulletin onwards, so we start including the water levels, uh, which has been uh, uh, reported. Because the water level also, we had to wait some time because the tsunami wave has to travel and reach the nearest uh, uh, sea level gauge or the tsunami buoy. So based on that, uh, uh, we'll then uh, calibrate, uh, recalibrate the mo model, uh, and uh, the threat map itself based on uh, those information. 
so uh, i can say that uh, by on an average by 30 minutes 30 minutes if uh, the tsunami wave uh, can arrive at the nearest uh, sea level gauge uh, within that time or maybe 40 minutes some cases uh, if the tsunami wave takes a little uh, longer time to arrive there uh, uh, onwards we uh, the warnings are very pakka uh, they are very confirmed warnings but uh, between uh, 10 to 20 minutes you have a formidable uh, warning actionable warning with you with the disaster managers and uh, with the uh, general uh, population to act uh, act upon so these are the kind of uh, timelines and uh, we also issued uh, all clear uh, warning uh, or the message uh, when uh, no more tsunami waves can uh, arrive at that location and till that uh, all clear uh, message is issued no one is uh, expected to supposed to go to the coast go to the beach and um, uh, stay away from the beach till uh, the early warning center issues the all clear uh, um, message thank you thank you dr shanai that was a very, very nice question and answer thank you very much so uh, we thank you for uh, spending your valuable time to give a webinar in this moes webinar series and uh, by this uh, we come to the conclusion or end of this talk so we can uh, go offline thank you thank you sir thank you everyone for participation thank you thank you very much and thanks to all those who viewed this uh, webinar and also uh, let me thank uh, indian institute of tropical meteorology in uh, pune uh, who has coordinated this uh, webinar thank you vinu and your uh, team for um, Uh, organizing this webinar thank you very much okay oh, thank you sir.